Back here at the Temple Drum, a flying start from Judd Trump, the former World Championship runner-up and UK champion leading Ali Carter by two frames to nil, including that excellent break of 92 in the second frame after Carter had played an attacking safety, but left and a couple of reds over Trump the pockets. So it's Trump to get us underway in frame three, a change in the commentary box. We got rid of Joe Johnson because he's getting on a bit and he won the world title at least 100 years ago. So we've got a more current world champion to talk us through frame three. Neil Robertson, welcome. Pleasure to be here. Obviously under more disappointing circumstances, not having uh, qualified through Wigan, but uh, yeah, still enjoying the experience of being in the commentary booth. It's not been a bad season thus far, though, has it? Champion of champions, UK champion. Yeah. That was a pretty lucrative month that you spent on the Green Bays. Yeah, it was, yeah, indeed, uh, especially with uh, Christmas, Christmas right around the corner. Um, definitely came in handy. And that fabulous match that you played against Trump, Neil, at the Masters where, I mean, you scarcely did anything wrong. The standard was just off the scale. Both of you were scoring superbly when you got in. Must be frustrating when you've played that well and you still come out second best because it's not as though you really did anything wrong. No, it was, it was a fantastic match and, um, you know, going into the tournament, obviously I was, I was very confident. Um, and, uh, yeah, I had a, had a bit of a bad feeling that someone was going to produce a performance like that sooner or later. And uh, unfortunately for me, it happened that week. But, um, you know, I have to take my hat off to Jelly. He played a fabulous match and, um, you know, it was, it was worthy of any final. And, um, you know, he seems to be sort of carrying on that form here tonight. He's, he's playing very solid so far against Ali. Ali hasn't done too much wrong. Just um, the aggressive safety shot in the last frame uh, cost him, you know, leaving the red over the hole. Yeah, this is a big frame, isn't it, for Carter? Yeah, I, I think if Judd goes 3 0 up, he'll um, you know, be very confident in getting the job done. Um, Ali will then have to start to chase the match somewhat, and uh, that'll sort of play into Judd's hands. So uh, I think this next frame uh, could be the telling frame of the match. Oh. Well, that's what he's known for. One. Here's long potting. He's outstanding. And that really hurts a player, doesn't it, Neil? Because he's not played a poor safety there, Ali, but Trump's just got down and stroked that in. Yeah, he just uh, over the, over around the cue ball a little bit um, by a few inches. And, you know, Judd, uh, you know, he's in very good form. So those kind of shots uh, at home look very difficult. But for a top player like Judd, he would, be, would have been very confident, you know, in taking that on. And Five. Especially because he could manoeuvre the cue ball and get back to bolt pretty easily. Um, you know, it was a shot to nothing, and uh, he was always going to be very confident on that shot. Touching ball. Queuing here for Trump, but shouldn't be a problem. Six. This is a somewhat unusual venue Neil as regards the open plan nature of it with five tables in use simultaneously does it feel different when you're competing out there in this open plan arena yeah it's it's very tough to maintain your focus throughout a match especially in Ali's case because you know, he spent most of the time sitting in the chair and Ali will, you know you'll need to focus on what's actually happening at the table with Judd because um, yeah, you don't want to let your thoughts wander around on the other tables and maybe see some uh, a closer frame. Somebody might be having a, a black ball fight on one table. So he ne really needs to focus on, on, on his own table and, and wait for his chance. And if it does come, he needs to be ready for it because 
I've played here you know, a few years and um, a couple of matches I wasn't really 100% focused because especially if you're on the main number one table, Night. you know, you've got all the other tables around you so it's very easy to let your mind wander and um, you know, watch what's going on around you. Oh, well, there is the Temple Drum in all its glory. Excellent crowd in again. This tournament always very well supported. They generate terrific atmosphere. You do have to be 100% focused on what's going on on your table, despite the distractions. And at the moment, Trump certainly is. He looks in the zone. Twenty-six. Not much Carter can do sitting there. Twenty-seven. That's one of the unique elements of snooker isn't it Neil unlike other sports that when your opponents at the table and potting like Trump is right now you're powerless to do anything to change the situation yeah that's right uh, you know Ali sitting in his chair he didn't play a terrible shot by any means and um, you know when another top player is playing really well there's, there's not a lot you can do about it you just have to you know wait there you know concentrate maintain your focus sort of you know convince yourself to always get ready you know if your opponent misses and um, you know, Ali's very strong mentally, so he won't be too sort of disappointed with his own performance so far. And um, you know, he's come back from um, from bigger deficits like this in, in matches before. So uh, you know, he'll, he'll still be confident in his own ability that you know, should he get the chance, it, he'll be able to take it and perhaps put some pressure on Jack. Fault. Yeah, it's not as though Carter's played poorly. One or two half chances, but Trump has been clinical so far. Forty-one. And this is a golden opportunity for Trump to move three in front. One more frame to come after this one before the interval. First of five, of course, to go 46. through to the round of 16. 94%, that's excellent. Anything over 90 is the benchmark for these top pros. 47. Martin Gould. In the background. He's up against Mark Williams this evening. Former champion here. Eight. Yeah, that was a kick. You 59. saw the red leave the bed of the table. Yeah, there's been quite a few so far in this uh, in this break already. Um, the red judge played before to land wrong side of the blue. You got a you got a really big bad contact on that. And um, this venue does play a little bit harder than some of the others. I don't know why. Um, a few years ago, it was very tough to play. A lot of kicks, a lot of big bounces off the cushions, and as a professional, it's very frustrating. And so far, from what I've seen, it looks as though this table is going to bounce quite frequently off the cushions um, more than expected, and possibly a high number 65. of kicks as well. So it'll be interesting to see how that pans out this week. Meanwhile, Trump has potted frame ball. This blue to make absolutely sure. Broke down on 92 in the previous frame. Another opportunity for a century. Sent. Carter watches on. Yeah, how much of a frustration is it, Neil, when you're involved in a match where there are an unusually high number of kicks? Does it begin to affect your confidence, your trust in what you're doing? Yeah, it does, because, I mean, you always have to play the correct shot, but what it can do is that, you know, for a shot that you'd normally just roll in sort of at a, at a pretty slow Eight. pace you can then start stunning balls in to avoid the kick because um, you know the highest 17. amount of kicks come from slowly rolled shots so it can f sort of play around with your mind a little bit in that kind of way um, but that's when it kind of suits a player like Judd who likes to sort of stun the balls in and he can you know um, get by you know easier than some of the other players who someone like Mark Williams who 
sort of really struggles in a in a kick heavy environment, so to speak. Uh, because Mark Williams just rolls every ball in, you know, sort of floats him in. But someone like Judd, uh, even myself, you know, prefer to stun balls in. Well, the kick wasn't costly for Trump. He's looking very serene out there at the moment. 92. And surely this time the hunter break is his for the taking. 93. Terrific scoring. We've already mentioned that he's lost his previous two encounters against Carter, both in a final frame. But he looks in the mood for some revenge this evening. And there is the century. 100. The 27th of this campaign, the 376th of his career. 102. And this guy next to me knows a thing or two about making 100 breaks, that extraordinary century of centuries. A couple of seasons back. 105. That was a special moment for you, Neil, when you clinched it. It was against Trump, if memory serves me correctly, at the World Championship. Yeah, it, it was indeed. And, um, yeah, obviously, an yeah, incredible uh, achievement to do that. And, uh, you know, it's uh, looking increasingly harder to do because, obviously, uh, you know, we won't have the PTC tournaments next season. And, um, yeah, very, obviously very proud of that achievement. Well, Trump misses the blue, or does he? Well... <laughs> So Trump, 109, and the frame. A terrific break from Judd Trump, then, who's dominating this match at the moment. Ali Carter really hasn't had much of a look in, and the run of 109 puts Trump 3-0 to the game.